You are watching yet yeah, another episode of Eric Lee Shenanigans of 1977. It's Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday, and you know what those days mean. It's time for another AEW Event Center report for either Dynamite, Rampage, or Collision. And now, here is the host of the AEW Event Center Wrestling Report, New Bedford's version of Tony Schiavone, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode. I'm very clean with shenanigans, 1977, episode 1,845 of the show, November 27, 2024, 10.30 p.m., that's right, it is Thanksgiving Eve, Dynamite was over about half an hour ago, and so I clean my head a little bit so I can do this episode, so I can do it right, and before I uh, call it a night, and I know I've been having this advice from the Discord app, but uh, I'm, going to have to, I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline. Because I'm, going to, because I'm going to have to take a shower, get some sleep, and then I'm going to wake up early tomorrow morning to do the Pressure Luck video before everybody comes. And I don't want to get disturbed while... I don't want to be doing videos and getting disturbed while I'm at it. So, I don't... Because I want, I want to, you know, have a good time with the family and whatnot. So, that's the way it is. That's the way I am. So, sorry for all the folks out there who invited me on Discord. But uh, I'm going to have to take a pass for now. So, uh, life, my life is crazy. It's insane. Is it? Insanely cracky wacky. That's what it is. It's all insane in a membrane. When it comes to the holidays, expect your life to be totally nuts. And, like, my life is totally nuts. Ah! Well, Jeff Hardy. Anyways. <laughs> Any, anyways. Such a humor uh, as I have I. So... Let's get going here on AEW Dynamite Thanksgiving Eve, the fallout from Full Gear. And um, the Continental Classic is back. But this time around, Kazushka Okada, the um, the Continental Champion, will be in this round-robin tournament. And as you know, there'll be 20-minute uh, matches. Uh, matches with a 20-minute time limit. A pinfall is worth three. A draw is worth one. And nobody's allowed at ringside. So, anybody got factions? Anybody got factions? You tell your partners to stay in the freaking back. You know? And the Death Rider seems to be one because um, here's where we stand, right? The Blue League has two champions on in that league. Kajushka Okada, the current Continental Champion. Uh, Daniel Garcia, the TNT Champion. In fact, this coming Saturday afternoon at 4... They'll be colliding in collision. Uh, get it? They'll be going at it. So, champion versus champion. Uh, rounding out the Blue League, the Beast Mortos, the Protostar, Kyle Fletcher, Mark Briscoe, and the Hurt Syndicate's representative in that in this uh, Continental Classic, Mr. Shelton Benjamin. Meanwhile, in the Gold League, Darby Allen will be uh, part of it. Um, and the Death Riders' lone representative, Claudio Castagnoli, will be in it again. Brody King of the House of Black will be in it. Will Ospreay, Ricochet, and for the Bam Bam Gang, Juice Robinson, a.k.a. Mr. Tony Storm, will be in the in the Gold League. So, the Hurt Syndicate kicks off Dynamite and addresses the Chicago crowd. So we're here to hurt people and take titles. Basically, that's what they, that's what they said. About to do. And then it kicked off with the Continental Classic as Mark Briscoe went one-on-one -on -one with Shelton Benjamin. Heck of a matchup between these two. It could have gone either way. But the standard of excellence, the former gold standard, Shelton Benjamin, ends up winning the matchup. And the Tony Schiavone interviewed Mercedes Monet about how she retained her title against Chris Statlander. And then she goes, and she looks at Camille goes, speaking of people who can't do their jobs, Camille, since you haven't done, you haven't done anything right, I got something to say to you. You, uh, your, and then Camille says, "Shut up! You know, you're not not gonna fire me because I quit." So Camille walked out on Mercedes Monet. Smart thing Camille has ever done. Mercedes Monet, you rang your mouth far too long, and guess what? Now without her, you're gonna lose that. Not only you're gonna lose the GPS title, but you lose the NJPW Strong Women's Championship very very soon. We have our world title on the line as Chris Jericho defends it against the Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii of the conglomeration. Jericho representing the Learning Tree. 
and these two traded blows to the point where they busted each other open. Jericho did everything he could to try to beat Tomohiro Ishii, used all his finishing maneuvers, didn't work. Finally, it took three Judas Effect elbows to defeat the Stone Pitbull. I mean, three of them. I mean, Tomohiro Ishii, to me, is not human. The man is not human. I'm telling you. I don't know what he was taught, in, what, what he learned up in Japan, but it really, if that's his secret, man, hey, well, power to him, man. So I'm telling you what, the Ishii just feels no pain. That that man, could, you can slap him, he can just look at you and just stare at you. Probably slap you back. He'll, he'll, he'll slap you so hard, your face will be will be flying the next week. That's how tough Tomo Ishii, how Ishii is. But Jericho, with three juice elbows, finally defeated the Stone Pit Bull. So he's going to go into the final battle as the Ring of Honor World Champion. Rene Paquette interviewed Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana about how they're going to, you know, he said, we're going to rebuild, we're going to move on, and we're, we're going to rise again. They plan the Max Caster comes around and starts laughing at him with whistle funny. He said, you know what, we'll make this a comedy. We'll get, I'm going to wrap a few bars. You know, you used to be a house of fire. Hey, house fire. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, oh no, you shouldn't have said that, Max. Max Caster opened up his big mouth. He gets his butt kicked by by Swerve Strickland. And the Prince Nana says, we got to go, boss. We got to go. And they told Shivani interviewed Hangman um, Hangman Adam Page. And he addressed and says, none of the other guys are claiming Moxley should be holding that world title. But I made a deal with Christian Cage, but he failed to, to capitalize. I want the world title. That title should be mine, right? And then uh, Jay White comes out, interrupts him, and says, hey, listen, I beat you many, many times. I should be getting the shot at the title. But then Pac attacks Jay White. Will Euter attacks Adam Page. Page decided to hit Jay White. Marina, Shafir hits Adam Page. Jay White gets at Shafir. And John Moxley attacks Jay White. And Marie Shafir puts her in that special sleeper hole that she calls Mother's Milk. And uh, and then the Death Riders just stomp the you-know-what out of them. I mean, I mean, you gotta, be, you gotta be kidding me, right? Here we go. And the Gold League Continental Classic matchup, Ricochet versus Claudio Castagnoli. And it's a heck of a matchup, but Claudio ended up winning the matchup. As you know, Ricochet and Claudio faced each other. Many times before, some probably in the WWE during their time there. Rene Paquette interviewed Don Cowles and Kyle Fletcher. And now Kyle Fletcher and Don Cowles still want to make Will Ospreay's life miserable, but also trying to win this Continental Classic. Adam Cole, Matt Taven, and Mike Bennett comes out and dresses the Chicago crowd, addresses MJF, plot, um, vows to beat him. Kyle Riley comes out and says, hey, let me fight an MJF. No, no, no. I don't want any of my other my friends getting hurt again. Let me, let me fight. And then Kyle goes, it's not about you, it's about Roddy. And Adam goes, come on. I understand. You know, MJF comes out. And MJ interrupts them on the screen playing the piano. And he has no interest in fighting one. MJF is a coward. That beavis looking butt-headed moron is a coward. MJF, why don't you be a man, grow a set, and fight? I... Uh, um, Adam Cole or and or Kyle O'Reilly. Come on. You say you're better than everyone else, but you're gonna be like, oh, I'm not gonna fight anybody. I'll tell you one thing, if you were if I was in the ring with MJF and he tried to talk, I would knock him out with a clothesline. Whammo! Give him a wedgie and then and then use his scarf as toilet paper. And then give it back to him and make him eat it. Because MJF is a coward, and I'll tell you what, he's gonna get his butt kicked one of these days. By either Kyle O'Reilly or Adam Cole, baby. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And then the International Women's Cup uh, semifinal matchup, there will be two matches. One, this will um, Jamie Hayter versus Queen Amanada. The other will be Serena Deeb versus Will Nightingale, December the 7th, a week from the Saturday. And, uh, and it was a heck of a matchup, but Jamie Hayter didn't end up winning that matchup. But the lights went out. And Jamie Hayter knew that it was Julia Hart playing mind games. And then, and there was a spotlight at the ring entrance. And everybody's saying, 
And it could be just, you know, uh, Jamie, uh, it could be uh, Julia Hart playing my name is Jamie Hayter. Renee Paquette sat down, interview with the lovely, gorgeous, beautiful, possibly the sexiest woman to come out of Japan, as far as Japanese res female wrestlers are concerned, Mina Shirakawa. Yes, I said it. Over EO Sky, definitely. Kairi Sane, Asuka, Hikaru Shida. But Mina Shirakawa. And Mina Shirakawa, to me, is the sexiest woman, female wrestler from Japan. And she wore this nice pink dress, like a pink bow. It's like something came out of the 80s. She looked gorgeous in it. And then she says, that's the real Mariah May. It's time for her to see the real Mina Shirakawa. Then Mariah May decided to clock her in the back with a, with a bottle. And then she grabs Mina and she goes, I want Mina. Drops him. And in two weeks' time, winter is coming. The title will be on the line. 11 days before Christmas. As Mariah May will defend the AEW Women's, Women's World Championship against the lovely Mina Shirakawa. And then the Continental Classic, Darby Allen versus Brody King. Brody King picks up three points, getting the victory over Darby Allen. Connie Cassidy only returns with a chair, but Brody King stepped back in the ring, kind of looks at him. Yep. Brody King says, uh-uh. So, that's all the time we have on this show. Episode 1845. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the show. Um, what's what's going to be on the docket tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I want to take this time to wish everyone a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving. And be safe out there, traveling and whatnot. And I pray that all your relatives, if the, if, if the uh, if your Thanksgiving is up at your house this year, I pray that all your relatives and loved ones now that you you and that everybody that you invited be attending and be that are attending be um, be there safely and. Be there safely without harm and um, with smiles on their faces and having a good time. Meanwhile, and I hope everyone out there has a great Thanksgiving as well. So, um, tomorrow, press your luck. I'm going to try to do that early tomorrow morning. Try to get that done on a special Thanksgiving episode of Network Throwdown Thursday. Hope I beat the whammy on Thanksgiving. I did it once and I'll do it again. So whammies, get ready. The only turkeys I'm going to roast are you. So be on the lookout. So to that end, I will see you later. Also tomorrow, rant on Thanksgiving edition of Rant and Rave and TNA. I'm really excited. So until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for... Eric Lee Machinanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, Dorf of Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Bofa Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Eric Lee Machinanigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.